Formation of an agency relationship. Agency relationships are a key concept on the real estate license exam. For you to represent any party in a real estate transaction, you must establish an agency relationship. A true agency relationship has additional duties called fiduciary duties that are often required by law. As an agent, you could be held liable for violation of these duties or not performing them as required. To help you remember them, use the acronym OLCAR. Obedience, Loyalty, Disclosure, Confidentiality, Accounting, and Reasonable Care. In real estate, there are two things that establish agency relationships an agreement between the parties which creates a documented express agency or the actions of the parties which creates an implied type of agency. It is important to note that if the statute of frauds in your state requires real estate agency agreements to be in writing, you might need an express agency agreement to collect a commission from your client. Now let's look at the different ways of forming an agency relationship. Express agency. Express agency creates an agency relationship through an agreement between an agent and a principal. The agent and the principal state their intentions to enter into an agency relationship in which the agent will represent the principal. They can do this either orally or in writing, but not all states consider oral agreements to be enforceable. This means that it is possible for an oral agreement to establish an agency relationship, but not be enforceable by you, the agent, to collect a fee. The typical written agreement is a listing agreement or a buyer's agency agreement. In practice, you want to work with agreements as much as possible. That way, the details of your transaction are all documented and protected by law. Implied agency. Implied agency establishes an agency relationship through the actions of the two parties. This happens when nothing formal has been agreed or written down, but the agent and the principal act as if they had an agency relationship anyway. Creating an implied agency may not have been what the two parties intended, but it could still be the result of their actions. For example, Susan is selling her home by herself and puts up a for sale sign on the lawn. Stephen drives by, sees the sign, and stops in. Stephen identifies himself as a real estate agent and asks some questions about the house. Susan tells Stephen that she doesn't want to list the house with any real estate brokerage, but it's okay for him to bring by any possible buyers to them to view the house. The next day, Stephen brings the Bowers, who really like the house and want to make an offer. Stephen tells Susan and begins negotiating a deal. A month later, the Bowers close on the deal and everybody's happy, until Susan tells Stephen she doesn't owe him a commission. It will be up to a judge to make a final decision in a case like this, but it's likely that Stephen and Susan have established an implied agency relationship based on their actions and Susan will have to pay up. Agency by estoppel. Estoppel is a tricky one. Let's use Stephen and Susan again to help us explain it. Susan is standing in front of her house putting up her for sale sign when Stephen stops to talk to her about the house. A potential buyer walks past and asks about the house too. Susan, who thinks she's funny, says, Why don't you ask Stephen here? He's an agent. The potential buyer gets Stephen's business card and calls him later about Susan's property. Even though there is no formal agreement, if Susan allows the potential buyer to continue believing that Stephen is her agent, there could be an agent by estoppel. Estoppel is a legal principle which says that a person cannot go back on something they previously said. In this case, it means that Susan can't allow a buyer to think that Stephen is her agent and then later deny that it happened. Said the other way, an agency by estoppel is created when a principal doesn't stop an agent from going beyond the agent's normal duties, thus giving someone else the impression that there is an agency relationship. Agency by ratification. An agency by ratification happens when someone has no authority to perform an action does it anyway, and the principal later adopts the act. With the agency by ratification, an agency relationship is created retroactively by accepting the circumstances that created the agency after the fact. Suppose Carol is a real estate agent who knows Vivian is trying to sell her home. Carol negotiates a deal for Vivian's house without authorization without ever speaking to Vivian about it. One day, Carol arrives with a completed contract. 
All Vivian has to do is accept the deal and sign the paperwork and her house is sold. If Vivian accepts the deal and signs, she has effectively ratified what Carol has been doing and probably created an agency by ratification. I say probably because Carol wants a fee for her services and she may have to sue Vivian to collect. When that is the case, it is ultimately up to the courts to determine if there is an agency relationship or not. Agency coupled with interest. An agency coupled with an interest can happen when an agent has some kind of interest in the property that's being sold. For example, suppose Joe is a part-time broker. He is also an architect and he agrees to design some houses for a builder who will give Joe the listing for the finished house. Because Joe made an investment in the project, the builder can't cancel the agreement. It is now an agency coupled with interest. This might sound like a tie-in agreement, which would be a violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. And this would have been the case if Joe required the builder to hire him as an architect as well as a broker. But Joe isn't making one activity conditional on the other. He is simply offering both services and the builder agreed. In an agency coupled with interest, it is if Joe was investing in the project. Most agency relationships are established in writing with different agreements for buyers and seller agency relationships. Listing agreements involve sellers. Buyer agency agreements involve buyers. Each has multiple types of agreements. The different agreements have many similarities, like the types of duties to be performed. One thing that stays the same are the fiduciary duties of the agent. Remember to use the acronym OLDCAR, Obedience, Loyalty, Disclosure, Confidentiality, Accounting, and Reasonable Care. I hope this helps you understand the different ways agency relationships are formed. Until next time, remember to keep it concise and keep it simple.